Saint Paul, abbreviated Saint Paul, is the capital and second most populous city of the U.S. state of Minnesota. As of 2017, the city's estimated population was 309,180. Saint Paul is the county seat of Ramsey County, the smallest and most densely populated county in Minnesota. The city lies mostly on the east bank of the Mississippi River in the area surrounding its point of confluence with the Minnesota River, and adjoins Minneapolis, the state's largest city. Known as the Twin Cities, the two form the core of Minneapolis St. Paul, the 16th largest metropolitan area in the United States, with about 3.6 million residents. Founded near historic Native American settlements as a trading and transportation center, the city rose to prominence when it was named the capital of the Minnesota Territory in 1849. The Dakota name for St. Paul is Imnazaska. Though Minneapolis is better known nationally, St. Paul contains the state government and other important institutions. Regionally, the city is known for the Xcel Energy Center, home of the Minnesota Wild, and for the Science Museum of Minnesota. As a business hub of the Upper Midwest, it is the headquarters of companies such as Ecolab. St. Paul, along with its twin city, Minneapolis, is known for its high literacy rate. It was the only city in the United States with a population of 250,000 or more to see an increase in circulation of Sunday newspapers in 2007. The settlement originally began at present day Lambert's Landing, but was known as Pig's Eye after Pierre. Pig's Eye parent established a popular tavern there. When Lucien Galtier, the first Catholic pastor of the region, established the Log Chapel of St. Paul shortly thereafter to become the first location of the Cathedral of St. Paul, he made it known that the settlement was now to be called by that name, as, "...St. Paul as applied to a town or city was well appropriated, this monosyllable is short, sounds good, it is understood by all Christian denominations." History. Burial mounds in present-day Indian Mounds Park suggest that the area was originally inhabited by the Hopewell Native Americans about 2,000 years ago. From the early 17th century until 1837, the Medewakanton Dakota, a tribe of the Sioux, lived near the mounds after fleeing their ancestral home of Mill Lacks Lake from advancing Ojibwe. They called the area Imni Za Ska Dan, Little White Rock, for its exposed white sandstone cliffs. In the Menominee language it is called Senapan Menakan, which means, "...ribbon, silk or satin village," suggesting its role in trade throughout the region after the introduction of European goods. Following the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, U.S. Army officer Zebulon Pike negotiated approximately 100,000 acres 40,000 hectares, 160 square miles of land from the local Dakota tribes in 1805 to establish a fort. The negotiated territory was located on both banks of the Mississippi River, starting from St. Anthony Falls in present-day Minneapolis, to its confluence with the St. Croix River. Fort Snelling was built on the territory in 1819 at the confluence of the Mississippi and Minnesota Rivers, which formed a natural barrier to both Native American nations. The 1837 treaty with the Sioux ceded all local tribal land east of the Mississippi to the U.S. government. Tauyataduda Chief Little Crow v. moved his band at Kaposia across the river to the south. Fur traders, explorers, and missionaries came to the area for the fort's protection. Many of the settlers were French Canadians who lived nearby. However, as a whiskey trade flourished, military officers banned settlers from the fort-controlled lands. Pierre. Pig's eye. Parent, a retired fur trader turned bootlegger who particularly irritated officials, set up his tavern, the Pig's Eye, near present-day Lambert's Landing. By the early 1840s, the community had become important as a trading center and a destination for settlers heading west. Locals called the area Pig's Eye French, Loy du Cochon or Pig's Eye Landing after Parent's popular tavern. In 1841, Father Lucien Galtier was sent to minister to the Catholic French Canadians and established a chapel, named for his favorite saint, Paul the Apostle, on the bluffs above Lambert's Landing. Galtier intended for the settlement to adopt the name St. Paul in honor of the new chapel. In 1847, a New York educator named Harriet Bishop moved to the area and opened the city's first school. The Minnesota Territory was formalized in 1849 and St. Paul named as its capital. In 1857, the territorial legislature voted to move the capital to St. Peter. 
However, Joe Roulette, a territorial legislator, stole the physical text of the approved bill and went into hiding, thus preventing the move. On May 11, 1858, Minnesota was admitted to the Union as the 32nd state, with St. Paul as the capital. That year, more than 1,000 steamboats were in service at St. Paul, making the city a gateway for settlers to the Minnesota frontier or Dakota Territory. Natural geography was a primary reason that the city became a landing. The area was the last accessible point to unload boats coming upriver due to the Mississippi River Valley's stone bluffs. During this period, St. Paul was called the last city of the East. Industrialist James J. Hill constructed and expanded his network of railways into the Great Northern Railway and Northern Pacific Railway, which were headquartered in St. Paul. Today they are collectively part of the BNSF Railway. On August 20, 1904, severe thunderstorms and tornadoes damaged hundreds of downtown buildings, causing USD $1.78 million, .48 million present day in damages to the city and ripping spans from the high bridge. In the 1960s, during urban renewal, St. Paul raised western neighborhoods close to downtown. The city also contended with the creation of the interstate freeway system in a fully built landscape. From 1959 to 1961, the western Rondo neighborhood was demolished by the construction of Interstate 94, which brought attention to racial segregation and unequal housing in northern cities. The annual Rondo Days celebration commemorates the African American community. Downtown had short skyscraper building booms beginning in the 1970s. The tallest buildings, such as Galtier Plaza, Jackson and Sibley Towers, the Point of St. Paul condominiums, and the city's tallest building, Wells Fargo Place, formerly Minnesota World Trade Center, were constructed in the late 1980s. In the 1990s and 2000s, the tradition of bringing new immigrant groups to the city continued. As of 2004, nearly 10% of the city's population were recent Hmong immigrants from Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, and Myanmar. St. Paul is the location of the Hmong archives. Geography St. Paul's history and growth as a landing port are tied to water. The city's defining physical characteristic, the confluence of the Mississippi and Minnesota rivers, was carved into the region during the last ice age, as were the steep river bluffs and dramatic palisades on which the city is built. Receding glaciers and lake agassiz forced torrents of water from a glacial river that undercut the river valleys. The city is situated in east-central Minnesota. The Mississippi River forms a municipal boundary on part of the city's west, southwest, and southeast sides. Minneapolis, the state's largest city, lies to the west. Falcon Heights, Lauderdale, Roseville, and Maplewood are north, with Maplewood lying to the east. The cities of West St. Paul and South St. Paul are to the south, as are Lilydale, Mendota, and Mendota Heights, although across the river from the city. The city's largest lakes are Pig's Eye Lake, which is part of the Mississippi, Lake Fallon, and Lake Como. According to the United States Census Bureau, the city has a total area of 56.18 square miles, 145.51 square kilometers, of which 51.98 square miles, 134.63 square kilometers is land and 4.20 square miles, 10.88 square kilometers is water. The Parks and Recreation Department is responsible for 160 parks and 41 recreation centers. The city ranked number two in park access and quality, after only Minneapolis, in the 2018 Park Score ranking of the top 100 park systems across the United States according to the Nonprofit Trust for Public Land. Neighborhoods <inaudible> 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 St. Paul's Department of Planning and Economic Development divides St. Paul into 17 planning districts, created in 1979 to allow neighborhoods to participate in governance and use community development block grants. With a funding agreement directly from the city, the councils share a pool of funds. The councils have significant land use control, a voice in guiding development, and they organize residents. The boundaries are adjusted depending on population changes, as such, they sometimes overlap established neighborhoods. Though these neighborhoods changed over time, preservationists have saved many of their historically significant structures. The city's 17 planning districts are <laughs> Climate 
St. Paul has a continental climate typical of the upper Midwestern United States. Winters are frigid and snowy, while summers are warm to hot and humid. On the Köppen climate classification, St. Paul falls in the hot summer humid continental climate zone DFA. The city experiences a full range of precipitation and related weather events, including snow, sleet, ice, rain, thunderstorms, tornadoes, and fog. Due to its northerly location in the United States and lack of large bodies of water to moderate the air, St. Paul is sometimes subjected to cold Arctic air masses, especially during late December, January, and February. The average annual temperature of 47.05 degrees Fahrenheit degrees Celsius gives the Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan area the coldest annual mean temperature of any major metropolitan area in the continental U.S. Demographics The earliest known inhabitants from about 400 AD were members of the Hopewell tradition who buried their dead in mounds, now Indian mounds Park on the bluffs above the river. The next known inhabitants were the Medewakanton Dakota in the 17th century who fled their ancestral home of Mill Lacks Lake in central Minnesota in response to westward expansion of the Ojibwe nation. The Ojibwe would later occupy the north east bank of the Mississippi River. By 1800, French Canadian explorers came through the region and attracted fur traders to the area. Fort Snelling and nearby Pig's Eye Tavern also brought the first Yankees from New England and English, Irish, and Scottish immigrants who had enlisted in the army and settled nearby after discharge. These early settlers and entrepreneurs built houses on the heights north of the river. The first wave of immigration came with the Irish who settled at Connemara Patch along the Mississippi, named for their home in Connemara, Ireland. The Irish would become prolific in politics, city governance, and public safety, much to the chagrin of the Germans and French who had grown into the majority. In 1850, the first of many groups of Swedish immigrants passed through St. Paul on their way to farming communities in northern and western regions of the territory. A large group settled in Swede Hollow, which would later become home to Poles, Italians, and Mexicans. The last Swedish presence had moved up St. Paul's east side along Payne Avenue in the 1950s. In terms of people who specified European ancestry in the 2005 to 2007 American Community Survey, the city was 26.4% German, 13.8% Irish, 8.4% Norwegian, 7.0% Swedish, and 6.2% English. There is also a visible community of people of sub-Saharan African ancestry, representing 4.2% of St. Paul's population. By the 1980s, the Thomas Dale area, once an Austro-Hungarian enclave known as Frogtown German, Frochberg, became home to Vietnamese people who had left their war-torn country. A settlement program for the Hmong diaspora came soon after, and by 2000, the St. Paul Hmong were the largest urban contingent in the United States. Mexican immigrants have settled in St. Paul's west side since the 1930s, and have grown enough that Mexico opened a foreign consulate in 2005. The majority of residents claiming religious affiliation are Christian, split between the Roman Catholic Church and various Protestant denominations. The Roman Catholic presence comes from Irish, German, Scottish, and French Canadian settlers who, in time, would be bolstered by Hispanic immigrants. There are Jewish synagogues such as Mount Zion Temple and relatively small populations of Hindus, Muslims, and Buddhists. The city has been dubbed Paganistan due to its large Wiccan population. As of the 2005 to 2007 American Community Survey conducted by the U.S. Census Bureau, white Americans made up 66.5% of St. Paul's population, of whom 62.1% were non-Hispanic whites, down from 93.6% in 1970. Blacks or African Americans made up 13.9% of St. Paul's population, of whom 13.5% were non-Hispanic blacks. American Indians made up 0.8% of St. Paul's population, of whom 0.6% were non-Hispanic. Asian Americans made up 12.3% of St. Paul's population, of whom 12.2% were non-Hispanic. Pacific Islander Americans made up less than 0.1% of St. Paul's population. Individuals of other races made up 3.4% of St. Paul's population, of whom 0.2% were non-Hispanic. Individuals from two or more races made up 3.1% of St. Paul's population, of whom 2.6% were non-Hispanic. 
In addition, Hispanics and Latinos made up 8.7% of St. Paul's population. As of the 2000 U.S. Census, there were 287,151 people, 112,109 households, and 60,999 families residing in the city. The racial makeup of the city was 67.0% white, 11.7% African American, 1.1% Native American, 12.4% Asian mostly Hmong, 0.1% Pacific Islander, 3.8% from other races, and 3.9% from two or more races. Hispanic or Latino people of any race were 7.9% of the population. 2010 census. As of the census of 2010, there were 285,068 people, 111,001 households, and 59,689 families residing in the city. The population density was 5,484.2 inhabitants per square mile per square kilometers. There were 120,795 housing units at an average density of 2,323.9 per square miles .3 per square kilometers. The racial makeup of the city was 60.1% white, 15.7% African American, 1.1% Native American, 15.0% Asian, 0.1% Pacific Islander, 3.9% from other races, and 4.2% from two or more races. Hispanic or Latino people of any race were 9.6% of the population. There were 111,001 households of which 30.4% had children under the age of 18 living with them, 34.1% were married couples living together, 14.8% had a female householder with no husband present, 4.9% had a male householder with no wife present, and 46.2% were non-families, 8% of all households were made up of individuals and 8.5% had someone living alone who was 65 years of age or older. The average household size was 2.47 and the average family size was 3.33. The median age in the city was 30.9 years. 25.1% of residents were under the age of 18, 13.9% were between the ages of 18 and 24, 29.6% were from 25 to 44, 22.6% were from 45 to 64, and 9% were 65 years of age or older. The gender makeup of the city was 48.9% male and 51.1% female. Economy. The Minneapolis-St. Paul-Bloomington area employs 1,570,700 people in the private sector as of July 2008, 82.43% of which work in private service providing related jobs. Major corporations headquartered in St. Paul include Ecolab, a chemical and cleaning product company which was named in 2008 by the Minneapolis-St. Paul Business Journal as the eighth best place to work in the twin sites for companies with 1,000 full-time Minnesota employees, and security. Curian Financial Group Inc. The 3M Company is often cited as one of St. Paul's companies, though it is located in adjacent Maplewood. 3M employs 16,000 people throughout Minnesota. St. Jude Medical, a manufacturer of medical devices, is directly across the northern border of St. Paul in Little Canada, though the company's address is listed in St. Paul. The city was home to the Ford Motor Company's Twin Cities Assembly Plant, which opened in 1924 and closed at the end of 2011. The plant was in Highland Park on the Mississippi River, adjacent to Lock and Dam No. 1, Mississippi River, which generates hydroelectric power. The site is now being cleared of all buildings and tested for contamination to prepare for redevelopment. As the lead developer, the Ryan Company has released a proposed set of zoning changes that will shape how the land will be used. The City of St. Paul has financed city development by use of tax increment financing TIF. In 2018, the city had 55 TIF districts. Some projects that have benefited from TIF funding include the St. Paul Saints Stadium, and the affordable housing along the Twin Cities Metro Green Line. Culture In winter months, St. Paul hosts the St. Paul Winter Carnival, a tradition that began in 1886 when a New York reporter called St. Paul, another Siberia 
Attended by 350,000 visitors annually, the event showcases ice sculpting, an annual treasure hunt, winter food, activities, and an ice palace. The Como Zoo and Conservatory and adjoining Japanese garden are popular year-round. The historic Landmark Center in downtown St. Paul hosts cultural and arts organizations. The city's notable recreation locations include Indian Mounds Park, Battle Creek Regional Park, Harriet Island Regional Park, Highland Park, the Wabasha Street Caves, Lake Como, Lake Fallon, and Rice Park, as well as several areas abutting the Mississippi River. The Irish Fair of Minnesota is also held annually at the Harriet Island Pavilion area. And the country's largest Hmong American sports festival, the Freedom Festival, is held the first weekend of July at McMurray Field near Como Park. The city is associated with the Minnesota State Fair in nearby Falcon Heights just west of St. Paul's Como Park neighborhood and southeast of the University of Minnesota St. Paul campus. Though Fort Snelling is on the Minneapolis side of the Mississippi River Bluff, the area including Fort Snelling State Park and Pike Island is managed by the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources headquartered in the city. St. Paul is the birthplace of cartoonist Charles M. Schultz Peanuts, who lived in Miriam Park from infancy until 1960. Schultz's Snoopy cartoon-inspired giant, decorated Peanuts sculptures around the city, a Chamber of Commerce promotion in the late 1990s. Other notable residents include writer F. Scott Fitzgerald, playwright August Wilson, who premiered many of the ten plays in his Pittsburgh cycle at the local Penumbra Theater, painter Leroy Neiman, and photographer John Vachon. The Ordway Center for the Performing Arts hosts theater productions and the Minnesota Opera as a founding tenant. River Center, attached to Excel Energy Center, serves as the city's convention center. The city has contributed to the music of Minnesota and the Twin Cities music scene through various venues. Great jazz musicians have passed through the influential Artists' Quarter, first established in the 1970s in Whittier, Minneapolis, and moved to downtown St. Paul in 1994. Artists' Quarter also hosts the Soapboxing Poetry Slam, home of the 2009 National Poetry Slam champions. At the Black Dog, in Lowertown, many French or European jazz musicians Evan Parker, Tony Hymas, Benoit Delbic, François Cornelou have met Twin Cities musicians and started new groups touring in Europe. Groups and performers such as Fantastic Merlins, Dean McGraw, Davu Seru, Merciless Ghosts, and Willie Murphy are regulars. The Turf Club in Midway has been a music scene landmark since the 1940s. St. Paul is also the home base of the internationally acclaimed Rose Ensemble. As an Irish stronghold, the city boasts popular Irish pubs with live music, such as Shamrocks, The Dubliner, and O'Gara's. The internationally acclaimed St. Paul Chamber Orchestra is the nation's only full-time professional chamber orchestra. The Minnesota Centennial Showboat on the Mississippi River began in 1958 with Minnesota's first centennial celebration. St. Paul hosts a number of museums, including the University of Minnesota's Goldstein Museum of Design, the Minnesota Children's Museum, the Schubert Club Museum of Musical Instruments, the Minnesota Museum of American Art, the Traces Center for History and Culture, the Minnesota History Center, the Alexander Ramsey House, the James J. Hill House, the Minnesota Transportation Museum, the Science Museum. Museum of Minnesota, and the Twin City Model Railroad Museum. Sports The St. Paul Division of Parks and Recreation runs over 1,500 organized sports teams. St. Paul hosts a number of professional, semi professional, and amateur sports teams. The Minnesota Wild play their home games in downtown St. Paul's Excel Energy Center, which opened in 2000. The Wild brought the NHL back to Minnesota for the first time since 1993, when the Minnesota North Stars left the state for Dallas, Texas. The World Hockey Association's Minnesota Fighting Saints played in St. Paul from 1972 to 1977, citing the history of hockey in the Twin Cities and teams at all levels. Sports Illustrated called St. Paul the new hockey town USA in 2007. The Excel Energy Center, a multi purpose entertainment and sports venue, can host concerts and accommodate nearly all sporting events. It occupies the site of the demolished St. Paul Civic Center. The Excel Energy Center hosts the Minnesota High School Boys Hockey Tournament, the Minnesota High School Girls Volleyball Tournament, and concerts throughout the year. In 2004, it was named the best overall sports venue in the U.S. by ESPN. The St. Paul Saints is the city's independent league baseball team. 
There have been several different teams called the Saints over the years. Founded in 1884, they were shut down in 1961 after the Minnesota Twins moved to Bloomington. The St. Paul Saints were brought back in 1993 as an independent baseball team in the Northern League, moving to the American Association in 2006. Their home games are played at the open-air CHS field in downtown's Lowertown Historic District. Four noted Major League All-Star baseball players are natives of St. Paul, Hall of Fame outfielder Dave Winfield, Hall of Fame infielder Paul Molitor, pitcher Jack Morris, and first baseman Joe Maurer. The all-black St. Paul colored Gophers played four seasons in St. Paul from 1907 to 1911. The St. Paul Twin Stars of the National Premier Soccer League play their home games at McAllister Stadium. The first curling club in St. Paul was founded in 1888. The current club, the St. Paul Curling Club, was founded in 1912 and is the largest curling club in the United States. The Minnesota Roller Girls are a flat track roller derby league based in the Roy Wilkins Auditorium. Minnesota's oldest athletic organization, the Minnesota Boat Club, resides in the Mississippi River on Raspberry Island. St. Paul is also home to Circus Juventus, the largest circus arts school in North America. On March 25, 2015, Major League Soccer announced that it had awarded its 23rd MLS franchise to Minnesota United FC, a team from the lower level North American Soccer League. Bill McGuire and his ownership group, which includes Jim Polad of the Minnesota Twins, Glenn Taylor of the Minnesota Timberwolves, former Minnesota Wild investor Glenn Nelson, and his daughter Wendy Carlson Nelson of the Carlson Hospitality Company, had intended to build a privately financed soccer-specific stadium in downtown Minneapolis near the Minneapolis Farmers Market. But their plan was met with heavy opposition from former Minneapolis Mayor Betsy Hodges, who said her city was suffering from stadium fatigue. After building three stadiums, for the Minnesota Twins, Minnesota Vikings and the Minnesota Golden Gophers, within a six-year span. On July 1, 2015, after failing to reach an agreement with the city of Minneapolis, McGuire and his partners turned their focus to St. Paul. On October 23, 2015, Bill McGuire of Minnesota United FC and former St. Paul Mayor Chris Coleman announced that a privately financed soccer-specific stadium would be built on the vacant Metro Transit bus barn site in St. Paul's Midway neighborhood near the intersection of Snelling Avenue and University Avenue. It is midway between downtown St. Paul and downtown Minneapolis. The stadium will open in 2019 and seat 19,400. The team will play in the MLS in 2017. On May 15, 2018, the Minnesota Whitecaps joined the National Women's Hockey League as their fifth franchise. Founded in 2004, the team originally played in the Western Women's Hockey League before going independent in 2010 when that league folded. The Whitecaps will play their home games at Tria Rink, a 1,200-seat hockey arena and practice facility in downtown St. Paul. The team will play in the NWHL in 2018. The Timberwolves, Twins, Vikings, and Lynx all play in Minneapolis. Topic. Government and politics St. Paul has a variation of the strong mayor-council form of government. The mayor is the chief executive and chief administrative officer for the city and the seven-member city council is the legislative body. The mayor is elected by the entire city, while members of the city council are elected from seven different geographic wards of approximately equal population. Both the mayor and council members serve four-year terms. The current mayor is Melvin Carter DFL, St. Paul's first African-American mayor. Aside from Norm Coleman, who became a Republican during his second term, St. Paul has not elected a Republican mayor since 1952. The city is also the county seat of Ramsey County, named for Alexander Ramsey, the state's first governor. The county once spanned much of the present-day metropolitan area and was originally to be named St. Paul County after the city. Today it is geographically the smallest county and the most densely populated. Ramsey is the only home rule county in Minnesota. The seven member Board of Commissioners appoints a county manager whose office is in the combination City Hall County Courthouse along with the Minnesota Second Judicial Courts. The nearby Law Enforcement Center houses the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office. Topic. State and federal St. Paul is the capital of the state of Minnesota. 
The city hosts the Capitol Building, designed by St. Paul resident Cass Gilbert, and the House and Senate Office Buildings. The Minnesota Governor's Residence, which is used for some state functions, is on Summit Avenue. The Minnesota Democratic Farmer Labor Party, affiliated with the Democratic Party is headquartered in St. Paul. Numerous state departments and services are also headquartered in St. Paul, such as the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. The city is split into four Minnesota Senate districts 64, 65, 66 and, 67 and eight Minnesota House of Representatives districts 64A, 64B, 65A, 65B, 66A, 66B, 67A and 67B, all of which are held by Democrats. St. Paul is the heart of Minnesota's 4th Congressional District, represented by Democrat Betty McCollum. The district has been in DFL hands without interruption since 1949. Minnesota is represented in the U.S. Senate by Democrat Amy Klobuchar, a former Hennepin County attorney, and Democrat Tina Smith, former lieutenant governor of Minnesota. Asterisk district also includes Falcon Heights, Lauderdale and Roseville. Education <inaudible> 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 St. Paul is second in the United States in the number of higher education institutions per capita. Higher education institutions that call St. Paul home include three public and eight private colleges and universities and five post-secondary institutions. Well-known colleges and universities include the St. Catherine University, Concordia University, Hamlin University, McAllister College, and the University of St. Thomas. Metropolitan State University and St. Paul College, which focus on nontraditional students, are based in St. Paul, as well as a law school, Mitchell Hamlin School of Law. The St. Paul Public Schools District is the state's largest school district and serves approximately 39,000 students. The district is extremely diverse with students from families speaking 90 different languages, although only five languages are used for most school communication English, Spanish, Hmong, Karen, and Somali. The district runs 82 different schools, including 52 elementary schools, 12 middle schools, 7 high schools, 10 alternative schools, and 1 special education school, employing over 6,500 teachers and staff. The school district also oversees community education programs for pre-K and adult learners, including early childhood family education, GED diploma, language programs, and various learning opportunities for community members of all ages. In 2006, St. Paul Public Schools celebrated its 150th anniversary. Some students attend public schools in other school districts chosen by their families under Minnesota's open enrollment statute. A variety of K 12 private, parochial, and public charter schools are also represented in the city. In 1992, St. Paul became the first city in the U.S. to sponsor and open a charter school, now found in most states across the nation. St. Paul is currently home to 21 charter schools as well as 38 private schools. The St. Paul Public Library System includes a central library and 12 branch locations. Media Residents of St. Paul can receive 10 broadcast television stations, five of which broadcast from within St. Paul. One daily newspaper, the St. Paul Pioneer Press, two weekly neighborhood newspapers, the East Side Review and City Pages owned by the Star Tribune Company, and several monthly or semi-monthly neighborhood papers serve the city. Several media outlets based in neighboring Minneapolis also serve the St. Paul community, including the Star Tribune. St. Paul is home to Minnesota Public Radio, a three-format system that broadcasts on nearly 40 stations around the Midwest. MPR locally delivers news and information, classical, and The Current which plays a wide variety of music. The station has 110,000 regional members and more than 800,000 listeners each week throughout the Upper Midwest, the largest audience of any regional public radio network. Also operating as part of American public media, MPR's programming reaches 5 million listeners, most notably through Live From Here, hosted by Chris Thiele, previously known as A Prairie Home Companion, hosted by Garrison Keeler, who also lives in the city. The Fitzgerald Theatre, renamed in 1994 for St. Paul native and novelist F. Scott Fitzgerald, is home to the show. Transportation. 
Interstate and roadways Residents use Interstate 35 East running north-south and Interstate 94 running east-west. Trunk highways include U.S. Highway 52 Minnesota State Highway 280, and Minnesota State Highway 5. St. Paul has several unique roads such as AYD Mill Road, Fallon Boulevard and Shepherd Road, Warner Road, which diagonally follow particular geographic features in the city. Biking is also gaining popularity, due to the creation of more paved bike lanes that connect to other bike routes throughout the metropolitan area and the creation of Nice Ride Minnesota, a seasonally operated non-profit bicycle sharing and rental system that has over 1,550 bicycles and 170 stations in both Minneapolis and St. Paul. Downtown St. Paul has a 5-mile enclosed skyway system over 25 city blocks. The 563-mile Avenue of the Saints connects St. Paul with St. Louis, Missouri. The layout of city streets and roads has often drawn complaints. While he was governor of Minnesota, Jesse Ventura appeared on The Late Show with David Letterman, and remarked that the streets were designed by "...drunken Irishmen." He later apologized, though people had been complaining about the fractured grid system for more than a century by that point. Some of the city's road design is the result of the curve of the Mississippi River, hilly topography, conflicts between developers of different neighborhoods in the early city, and grand plans only half realized. Outside of downtown, the roads are less confusing, but most roads are named, rather than numbered, increasing the difficulty for non-natives to navigate. Topic. Mass transit Metro Transit provides bus service and light rail in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. The Metro Green Line is an 11-mile light rail line that connects downtown St. Paul to downtown Minneapolis with 14 stations in St. Paul. The Green Line runs west along University Avenue, through the University of Minnesota campus, until it links up and then shares stations with the Metro Blue Line in downtown Minneapolis. Construction began in November 2010 and the line began service on June 14, 2014. Roughly 45,000 people rode on the first day, and average 28,000 riders are expected per day. Metro Transit opened the Metro A Line, Minneapolis-St. Paul's first arterial bus rapid transit line, along Snelling Avenue and Ford Parkway. The A Line connects the Metro Blue Line at 46th Street Station to Rosedale Center with a connection at the Green Line Snelling Avenue Station. The A Line is the first in a series of planned arterial bus rapid transit lines and is set to open in early 2016. Topic: Railroad. Amtrak's Empire Builder between Chicago and Seattle stops twice daily in each direction at the newly renovated St. Paul Union Station. Ridership on the train increased about 6% from 2005 to over 505,000 in fiscal year 2007. A Minnesota Department of Transportation study found that increased daily service to Chicago should be economically viable, especially if it originates in St. Paul and does not experience delays from the rest of the western route of the Empire Builder. St. Paul is the site of the Pig's Eye Yard, a major freight classification yard for Canadian Pacific Railway. As of 2003, the yard handled over 1,000 freight cars per day. Both Union Pacific and Burlington Northern Santa Fe run trains through the yard, though they are not classified at Pig's Eye. Burlington Northern Santa Fe operates the large Northtown Yard in Minneapolis, which handles about 600 cars per day. There are several other small yards located around the city. Topic. Airports St. Paul is served by the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport MSP, which sits on 3,400 acres 14 square kilometers southwest of the city on the west side of the Mississippi River between Minnesota State Highway 5 Interstate 494, Minnesota State Highway 77, and Minnesota State Highway 62. The airport serves three international, 12 domestic, 7 charter, and 4 regional carriers and is a hub and home base for Delta Air Lines, Mesaba Airlines and Sun Country Airlines. St. Paul is also served by the St. Paul Downtown Airport located just south of downtown, across the Mississippi River. The airport, also known as Hallman Field, is a reliever airport run by the Metropolitan Airports Commission. 
The airport houses Minnesota's Air National Guard and is tailored to local corporate aviation. There are three runways that serve about 100 resident aircraft and a flight training school. The Hallman Field Administration Building and Riverside Hangar are on the National Register of Historic Places. <laughs> Sister cities St. Paul has eight sister cities, as designated by Sister Cities International. Notable people Bruce Olson, born 1941, missionary Lonnie Anderson, born 1946, actress Louis Anderson, born 1953, comedian Wendell Anderson, 1933-2016, U.S. Senator Harry Blackman, born 1908, U.S. Supreme Court Associate Justice, grew up in St. Paul Winfield S. Braddock, born 1848, Wisconsin State Assemblyman Herb Brooks, born 1937, hockey coach Warren Berger, born 1907, U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice Melva Clamere, 1874-1937, soprano singer Idea, born 1981, rap artist F. Scott Fitzgerald, 1896 to 1940, author. Josh Hartnett, born 1978, actor. Hippocampus, indie rock band. Paul Holmgren, born 1955, NHL hockey player, general manager, president of Philadelphia Flyers, 2014 present. Rachel Keller, born 1992, actress. Alan Kingdom, born 1993, rap artist. Tony Levine, born 1972, football coach. Joe Maurer, born 1983, MLB baseball player. Ryan McDonough, born 1989, NHL hockey player. Kate Millett, born 1934, scholar, author, feminist. Paul Molitor, born 1956, MLB baseball player. Jack Morris, born 1955, MLB baseball player. Leroy Neiman, born 1921, artist. Tim Pawlenty, born 1960, former governor of Minnesota. Alfred E. Perlman, 1902 to 1983, president of New York Central Railroad and its successor, Penn Central. Isaac Roosevelt, born 1985, American Israeli basketball player for Maccabi Ashdod in the Israeli Basketball Premier League. Charles Schultz, 1922 to 2000, cartoonist, born in Minneapolis, grew up in St. Paul. Lindsey Vaughn, born 1984, Olympic skier and gold medalist. DeWitt Wallace, 1889 to 1981, magazine publisher and co-founder of Reader's Digest. Dave Winfield, born 1951, MLB baseball player. Topic. See also. Minneapolis St. Paul Topic References Topic External Links Official Website Official Tourism Site Visitor Information Architecture of St. Paul St. Paul Almanac Singular Guidebook to Minnesota's Capital City Twin Cities Calendar, monthly list of concerts, fairs, and other St. Paul events. List of St. Paul buildings, places and tours on Plesiography Ramsey County and St. Paul Historical Society Lowertown, the rise of an urban village documentary produced by Twin Cities Public Television. <laughs>